Welcome, it's Dinom, and welcome to this market update. And today I have very, very good news in multiple fronts. So let's actually just get started and talk about the chart first, and then I will talk about something about fighting spirit. So first up, obviously, we have broken a couple of key resistances. So we broke upwards from this yellow line here. So we're basically back in the bull zone. We also had this resistance line here, and that got broken as well. And then we also have this RSI line here. And as you can see right now, we are uh, we have broken it to the upside. This can still go below the trend line, but because it has broken the upside, how I interpret that is that we are now basically the bullish momentum has gained power. So that is basically there. So now an idea that I have is actually which I shared uh, on Discord. So yesterday I actually flipped bullish here uh, on Discord. By the way, you can join here free. There's a link in the description. But yesterday I said, holy Bitcoin, it broke the, uh, these lines here. So I was asked, what's the plan? I said, buy. <laughs> so if the price goes back below the white line, that's basically where you can sell. Other than that, it looks nice. And then uh, a, a user named Jenny, he shared a pretty cool idea about a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern here as well. So that looks pretty cool. I want to share it in this video as well. So it would look like this. So here is one shoulder, then we have the head, and then we have another shoulder, and then we go to the upside. So this would probably be pretty, pretty uh, like a high probability trade that might happen. Obviously, who knows, maybe Bitcoin just bumps to the moon, moon here immediately, but uh, 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 something like this would look like, let's say more probable that we have that breather, the people who made these short term canes, they close their lungs and then we have a breather and then we have another move to the upside. That looks very probable. But because we have basically broken all of these things, I am back in uh, a bullish mood. Another reason why I'm bullish is obviously what has happened with President Trump. So I'm talking about the fighting spirit. So now that we saw these photos, of him surviving and Evan Bucci making this iconic photo of the situation. Uh, this was absolutely amazing photo. And, and I just saw a lot of fighting spirit. We saw Elon Musk just completely endorse Donald Trump. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, 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 many other celebrities and even Democrats flipping to support Trump from this. And this is basically showing me the fighting spirit. And when you see fighting spirit, do you think that is bullish or bearish? Obviously, it takes people out of melancholy. It takes people out of confusion. It takes people out of avoiding risk when they have fighting spirit. They are like, fuck this. I'm going to make it happen. And obviously, if they take out Trump, the movement will not die. The movement is still there. Trump is just a persona who is pushing this movement away from the woke ideology, away from the, uh, uh, the, the crazy socialistic uh, policies that we have seen being implemented by United States, by Europe and uh, the G7 countries, the lockdowns, all of that. People want to basically have peace again and prosperity. And that's basically all the things that Trump represents. And then we also are seeing that now people are coming out. Obviously, we're talking about Elon Musk. He said that in the last eight months, two people have actually tried to kill him as well. So this, these kind of things will make people fight. Another reason is that we have a lot of news from the propaganda media. Uh, this is just an article from The Atlantic, but BBC, CNN, all these uh, propaganda media outlets, they are basically just talking completely falsehoods. So here you can see Atlantic Atlantic is saying here that the gunman and the would-be dictator, so they are referring Trump as a dictator and violence talks the president who has rejoiced in violence to others. And <laughs> this is just completely funny because I, I think there's a lot of people on the planet who are very happy about different wars going on right now. And Trump is not one of those people. Uh, he's anti-war. 
he wants a negotiated peace but this headline here makes it seem like this is the guy who is calling for more war which is the opposite of what he is actually promoting for so anyway what i'm trying to get at here is that people have now seen through the facade of the propaganda media and that's another reason why when these things happen the fighting spirit is coming back online so that's another reason why i'm basically bullish on on the bitcoin price people will want to take more risk they want to make life better again so that's very important so obviously this will spill over to altcoins we saw a lot of altcoins pumping so we, when we actually take a look at altcoins just the last seven days you can see double digit numbers here all across the board what's very in, very interesting to me is like cardano is pumping xrp is pumping xlm is pumping all these legacy projects uh, maker dow i was talking about this in in the previous video which I said I'm not bullish on, but anyway, they are pumping. Stacks is pumping. But there are a couple of projects here in these lists that I want to talk about, which people have not yet noticed. So I want to talk about those at the end of the video. But all in all, Bitcoin looks quite bullish. We might have that short term uh, move to the downside when we go and take a look at the Bitcoin dominance, which kind of gives us the signal if we are headed for an altcoin season or if Bitcoin is going to. Uh, have its run and this one is kind of 50 50 so when what we can basically see here is that bitcoin has just completely dominated over altcoins since november 2022 so when this chart is going up it means that bitcoin is outperforming altcoins when this is going down it means that altcoins are outperforming bitcoin so right now we have still been in this channel here but as you can see here this top did not even reach the, the, the top of the channel anymore so th that means that the the momentum has declined let's say that and when we take a look at the uh, the rsi you can see that this top had a higher rsi here than had this top here so this is a bearish divergence on the chart which is which means that it is likely that we actually go to the downside here because this signals there's a momentum shift and now that we are basically back in the bull zone we have more money printing the m2 money supply has also increased uh, it's likely that this will actually break to the downside doesn't mean it will but it is likely so now i'm basically looking for opportunities in the altcoins once again so over the weekend did i uh, i I, I'm making remaking this video. Uh, yeah, I guess I showed it already, but I did flip bullish on the weekend. I guess I showed that already. Sorry for forgetting this, like my third or fourth time making this video. Anyway, uh, wanted to show that. And when we actually take a look at the fundamentals, uh, let me go here and chart layouts and Bitcoin metrics. By the way, you can use the sentiment tool as well. There's a link in the description if you want to help support this channel. There's a free version and a paid version. But if you want to look at these things, you can use the free version as well. Uh, nothing too interesting here except right about here. So these are the whale wallets and wallets of the different users. And these are just the number of total wallets in these different brackets. So the top line here shows us the total amount of Bitcoin wallets that have some amounts of Bitcoin in them. This has actually declined, which has told me or given me the signal that retail investors are actually selling. But at the same time, for the last couple of days, we have seen an increase in whale buying. But right now we have seen some whale selling as well. We're still seeing some whale buying and the uh, the uh, the pink line has gone neutral in the in the recent days but at the same time the germany has now sold all of their bitcoin so there's no sell pressure from them and when we just take a look at the 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 bottoms here you can see that the the mega whales who have had 10,000 to 100,000 bitcoin inside their wallets it's basically at a low here so maybe the sell pressure from these wallets have has also gone down so that could signal that this is actually a bottom unless some whales that have still held dearly to their bitcoin still want to keep their bitcoin maybe it will still go down 
but it looks to me like the cell pressure has exhausted. That's my take, uh, how I interpret this, even though this has gone down. I don't think it means that the price will go back down. I don't know, maybe I could be wrong here. But another interesting point here to make is when we take a look at the dormant circulation. So this chart here gives us a spike every time old money transfers Bitcoin. So the yellow money shows addresses that have held Bitcoin for more than a year. The blue line shows Bitcoin that have been held for more than three years without being moved. So when we have a spike here, we see old money buy, uh, selling Bitcoin, right, basically. And we saw these spikes and that's what made me more bearish and more bearish and more bearish. And when we had, let's say, these pumps, we were still bearish here. But this sell pressure has basically gone down and down and down and down. And now with this spike here, we are currently not seeing sell pressure. So this is significant because it gives me a signal that something has changed or another signal that something has changed. Old money doesn't want to sell this pump yet. Yet, Obviously, traders will probably want to make money in the short term, so they might close the trade and that will give us the uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern that I showed. Uh, another thing, miners are still accumulating. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, basically giving me a signal that these guys want to wait until Bitcoin is at a more favorable price. And usually miners, they wait, uh, wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, accumulate, 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 until at some point they have they are, have seen enough and they want to start selling. And that's when they just sell and sell and sell and sell and sell and sell and sell. And sell. Uh, but right now it seems that they are back in accumulation mode and they are also waiting for higher prices. So in the medium term, at least, this is, in my opinion, looks bullish. And it also gives me a signal that the minor capitulation has now ended because these guys are no longer selling. So there's another signal. And when we take a look at the, uh, uh, the funds, the Bitcoin funds, you can see another huge candle here. So even though the, the buying from institutions ETFs was diminishing here, now we have basically new life back in this chart. $310 million worth of inflows into the ETFs. So people want Bitcoin even at these prices here. So this is a very, very good uh, signal that there's demand for Bitcoin. So all in all, Bitcoin looks very good, but even altcoins, in my opinion, look quite good. And there's specific altcoins, like I said, that I want to talk about in this video. I was looking at these different altcoins. There's a couple of altcoins. One is Ordi, which is the Ordinals protocol, which is running inside Bitcoin blockchain. And these are the, basically the NFTs on Bitcoin blockchain. So if you are bullish on Bitcoin, Ordinals might be a decent idea. So let me actually show you the Ordinals chart. So Ordinal and USDT, for example. You can see that this is down 66% from the top and it was all the way 63% down from the top. And the chart itself, this chart isn't, I'm not get, getting any divergences or trend lines, anything like that. I'm just saying that it looks quite cheap. And we had a bounce basically from this support line here already. So this looks pretty good. And the price move it has had so far has been 27%, which is already significant. But when we actually take a look at the short term trend line, it might go down a little bit. So you could still scout it at like $30, something like that. The price could come here. But ordin ordinals look like it, it, it looks pretty, pretty good. Because if Bitcoin is pumping, it is directly linked to ordinals. And uh, that's obviously bullish for this protocol here. So let's take a look at ordinals compared to Bitcoin price to see if we see something interesting here. And obviously, again, nothing too significant other than we are basically at a historical low and we had a bounce just below that low there but the yeah the pump is now ongoing no divergences nothing like that so we could go below it obviously nothing everything could anything could happen but i'm just saying that it has had a significant <laughs> downturn already so and for the last what is it three months now 
we have been basically in the sideways consolidation area. Uh, so I don't know. In my opinion, it looks like a decent bet if you want to hold ordinals for the long term and you're bullish for Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Nothing interesting here. So ordinals looks pretty, pretty good, but there's a product project that is even better in my opinion. And that, that is called Lido DAO. So let's take a look at Lido. Lido, it is the uh, liquid Ethereum staking protocol. And they have $32 billion worth of Ethereum staked inside the protocol. And take a look at the total value locked here. Total value locked was $6 billion when the market cap was what uh, uh, what the market cap is now, $1.5 billion. So the market cap was $1.5 billion when the total value locked was <laughs> six times less than it is now. And we are bullish on Ethereum, obviously. Ethereum ETFs are coming and all these good things. And the market cap is still $1.5 billion. So in my opinion, there's an immense divergence compared to the value and the price. So this is just completely insane. And let me show you the chart here. LDO USD. By the way, congratulations for making this video because you deserve what I'm about to show you. So let's take a look at the daily view. Obviously, we are inside this channel here. But when you look closely, let me take out the volume out. It's a little bit confusing. So this was a low here. This was a retouch of that low. And then we had another low. But this is a bullish divergence here. We had a lower low on the chart, but a, a, a higher low on the RSI here compared to this low here. It's, it's like a hidden bullish divergence or whatever. And that is usually like a super bullish signal. Obviously, you're not getting it at the best possible price, but it looks very good in my opinion. It was at this absolute like extreme low already. We had a bounce there. We have a, a hidden bullish divergence here on the chart. And there's, uh, well, this trend line here. So not a lot to this one, but if you expect this to be bro broken to the upside, because the value has gone up six times compared to the price. So the price could just absolutely go in a fly mode on LDO. The market cap of LDO is only $1.6 billion. So this could even 10x in the in the short term because it, it, they have 36 billion dollars worth of value locked inside LDO so in my opinion this is a massively undervalued project and here where it is where things go crazy so let me take a look at LDO USD compared to Ethereum USD so here this is where the fun begins so we have already broken out from this long term uh, crash of LDO compared to the price of Ethereum. So now we have basically been trying to find the bottom for the price of LDO and take a look at this. This is crazy. We have multiple bullish divergences on the chart. So we have higher lows, consi consistent higher lows on the chart while we have had lower lows on the price. So we have multiple divergences, bullish divergences on LDO against Ethereum trading pair. And we're still at the low here. So if you are bullish on Ethereum, I'm just saying when Ethereum goes up, the total value here goes up. And when that snaps back to the market cap to TVL ratio, which I've talked about in the past, that this is very significant. When that snaps back, to let's say something which was here like 0 0.15, now it's 0 0.05, a market cap to TVL ratio. If it snaps back there, the price against Ethereum could triple. So this here could triple from where we are currently uh, to, or let's say 200% gain on, on, on that. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
<laughs> so we could go all the way up here. So if B Ethereum goes to like $10,000, which is the absolute bull case that people are shouting at, if it would go to $10,000, LDO could go to uh, three times three. Uh, 9x so would go to like ten dollars so in my opinion ldo at this price level right now seems like an absolute no-brainer <laughs> this is like the best uh, that i was vetting for for this video i was looking at a lot of these different things glm obviously is pretty cool as well because they are holding their treasury holds 250 million dollars worth of ethereum so the treasury exceeds the market cap of the coin itself so it's another no no brain project if you are bullish on Ethereum because the value should be the treasury plus the protocol and the protocol value is not zero, it's something else. So GLM obviously, but just looking at LDO, it kind of fits in the narrative of Ethereum ETF narrative and it's in the, in the DeFi narrative. It's all these things uh, basically wrapped into together. So LDO right now looks like an absolute, absolute, absolute no-brainer in my opinion. But I could be wrong. And if this trade will go sideways, I don't take any responsibility. Personally, I'm putting a lot of money into LDO after I saw all of this here. But that's just my take there. So all in all, uh, Dinome is back uh, bullish. I'm happy to see the fighting spirit in America rise up. And I'm very excited for the next phases, what's about to happen. And obviously, Maybe I flip bearish once again if we see some something crazy in the real world. But let's see how that goes. I will make another video very, very soon, which is like an esoteric prediction that I saw one guy make, basically predicting Trump, uh, the year of uh, Trump being shot by an assassin, but Trump surviving and Trump becoming a president. And he made this prediction in April. So I'll make a video about him very soon because he's also talked about some altcoins. So <laughs> I just want to give his opinion out there. He was pretty bullish on XRP, for example. So I want to comment on that guy. So anyway, uh, look forward to more videos. If you want to join my Discord, there's a link in the description. Make sure to give me a follow on uh, 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 on Twitter or on YouTube as well. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks and bye bye.